Okay, on to marking out where you're going to drill the holes. And for this I like to use, obviously, a center punch. This is a cheapie I bought from Sears. Uh, it's like 10 bucks. This is the spring-loaded kind. You can use the hammer kind too, that's fine. Uh, and I have this old dead caliper. See, it's seen better days, the screen's cracked, it doesn't work. But that's okay, because we're going to use the graduations here. Alright, now to get an idea where you want to put your pins, or to drill your holes for the pins, you want them centered. Okay? So, this can really throw off the look of the knife, so you really want to focus on this, and that's why I use something to measure it. You could use a caliper that works, uh, but this one works just fine. I keep it around just for this. Okay, so we're going to start here, and I like to put my first pin right behind the finger twirl. And I'm going to get the thickness of it, or the height. And if you look, going off right here by the edge, what is that, 27? Yeah. yeah, about 27. So half of that is 13 and a half. So I'm going to take this down to one, two, about 13 and a half. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I'll show you how I do this in a second. And what you're going to do is take this, put, put the one end on the bottom right here, and scribe a line in the center. Now I dyed the blade so you guys can see it. Uh, you don't need to dye it unless you want to. And if you do want to, this is Dykem Layout Fluid. This stuff is awesome. Uh, cheap. I, I bought this from Midway. Uh, you can get it at any machine supply place. Okay. So you see we have a line. I scribed it from the bottom to the center. I'm going to do the same thing from the top just to make sure that we're in the right ballpark here. And you can see now I have two lines. It's pretty close. So I know center is in between those two lines. Okay, so that's where I'm going to put my pin. So the very first one, I'm going to go in between those two lines. Right about, right behind the finger choil, let's say. And I'm going to mark it with a punch. Okay, this punch isn't the greatest, but it works. You see that? I went uh, just a tiny bit high, but that's, uh, we're talking a thousandth of an inch, and nobody's ever going to know the difference. And we still have to finish the handle a little, little bit, so I could always even it out if I have to. Okay, same thing for the back. We're going to measure the back again. Because the front may be different from the back, but... Let's see, and in the back, right about where we want to put the pin, and we come up with about 26 and a half. So we'll go to 13 again. Cut that in half. We're down to right around 13. Just like that. And again, scribe your line. One's from the bottom. And one's from the top. See that one? We got a little closer. So I could throw, the, throw my punch mark right on top of that. Now, you kind of want to space these out evenly. And the way I like to do that, especially if you're doing multiple holes, is with this again. So let's say I'll go right in that first divot I made to lock in that bottom jaw. And you know what? 60, 60 millimeters sounds pretty good. So I'll set this thing to 60. And that gives me enough room on the end where my pin's not going to get too close because uh, you don't want that. It's going to look goofy. So this is probably about an inch from the end. And I'll scribe a line like this. You see? Now I know exactly where to put my, my punch for the pin. Okay? X marks the spot. So let's punch that one out. Okay. Come on, focus. Just like that. Beautiful thing, right? Now, this is going to be very handle heavy if I don't maybe drill some holes in the middle. So, I'm going to put... I'm going to make a hole dead center, and I'm going to use one of these big old strep... Uh, strep. <laughs> one of these big old step bits. It'll give the epoxy somewhere to go, 
and it'll lighten it up just a touch. I got this at Harbor Freight for five bucks. They don't last forever, but for five bucks they work pretty good. Okay, so how I'm gonna do that, now I want that center too, even though nobody's ever gonna see it. So we had 60 from hole to hole, so let's go half of that. Knock it down to 30. Okay, and then using my two little dimples here, where I hit it with the punch as a reference point, scribe a line like that. Oh, I know you probably couldn't see that. My fat arm was in the way, so scribe a line up like that. Go to the other one, scribe another line. Just like that. And you can see it kind of created a bit of an oval. So we know that our center mark is going to be right in that oval. And we'll line it up with these two lines. This is not as critical, like I said, because nobody's ever going to see it. But you practice uh, good techniques like this, and it'll show in your work later on. Okay. So now we have our holes all ma mapped out. And these are going to be for quarter-inch pins. So I'm going to go over to the drill press, and we're going to drill quarter-inch holes in all three of these. All right, we're over at the drill press now. I got my quarter-inch bit mounted up. And you've got to be careful with the drill press because I'm sure if you've ever heard of the helicopter, the dreaded helicopter is when the bit grabs the piece and spins this around like a helicopter. As you can imagine, getting whacked with that isn't going to be fun. And you might oblong the hole and ruin the knife. So we don't want that. So how I do it is I get it started. So I'll drill... Line it up with my punch mark. Drill a little divot in each one. Of course, it stuck stuff to it right away. There we go. Okay, so you can see, there we go, I got a little divot drilled. Now what's that going to, that's going to do for me is now I could run the drill down, hold it in place with the bit just like this. I'm not using a lot of pressure, just holding it. And I take my big old clamp like this and clamp it down. Now I don't have to worry about this thing spinning around and smacking me in the mouth or something. So here we go, now we can drill all the way through. Take it nice and slow, you want to do this on a slow speed on the press. Uh, and I'm using a cobalt drill bit, which tend to last a little bit longer when drilling through steel. You want to keep an eye on these, if they start turning red and blue and all kinds of cool colors, that means you're running too hot. Okay, we got our first hole drilled in, and then we got the two more. Now, I like to dunk these in between holes, because it is getting a little hot. Let the drill bit cool down a little bit. Uh, and I also, I do use some oil sometimes. So, like here I got a bottle of, this is a transmission fluid, believe it or not. It works very well uh, for drilling holes. It just makes a huge mess and it sucks but uh, it'll help to cool that bit down. So two more, two more to go. Okay, same thing, we'll lock it down with the drill bit. Just light pressure, just to hold it in place. Wiggle it around, make sure you got it centered. That looks good to me. Ah, there we go. Can you guys see anything? Kinda, let me move you over a tiny bit. All right, you can kind of see. All right, now I'm going to put a little 
transmission fluid on there. Just a little bit goes a long way. And here we go. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I saw the bit slipping a little bit, so let's tighten that up a touch. Just keep constant pressure on it. Not too, uh, not too hard. You can see it gets hot. I pull the drill up to let the chips clear and let it give it a second to cool down. It's called peck drilling. And uh, I've been doing it for a little while now, it seems to help. Okay, unclamp that. We're going to dip it in some water, cool that off. And that's two. Get rid of these chips because you want your hole nice and level and flat. Okay. Oof. Sliding because that's transmission fluid. There we go. All right, here we go. We're over here now. Okay, that's our three quarter inch holes. Ah. Cool that off again. You may no notice you get uh, burrs on the other side. But that's okay, we're gonna cover that in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna swap this out for that step drill bit. garbage. This step drill bit, oh, there you are, is a pretty nice finish. Uh, so we're going to go on back on the other side. We're just going to chamfer these a little bit. Uh, you don't have to do this step. I just do it because I'm kind of anal like that, but I'll show you what I mean. Just give it a little tap. You don't have to lock it down for this. Let me get my arm out of the way go in there and give it a tap. That's it. That's it. Another little tap. Okay. Cleans up the holes. Pretty nice. Same thing with the other side. Little tap. There you can see it cleans it up pretty good. No burrs or anything like that. Getting close. Making some progress, guys. <laughs> 